Trying to manage your photos can be a messy business. If you don't have a good system in place, it can be really difficult to find a certain image. You might spend ages looking for a photo scattered anywhere on your computer or various different external hard drives. Without a system, it's also really easy to lose your photos as you might not have backed them up properly when a drive corrupts. Trust me, it's really not good when this happens. In this video, I'm going to show you how I organise my photos and back them up in various places so it's easy for me to locate them and I'm secure in the knowledge that I won't lose any of the photos I've taken. I use Adobe Lightroom for editing and cataloguing all my photos, so this video will revolve around the usage of Lightroom. However, the file management system could be useful for pretty much any program, and even if you just shoot JPEGs and don't need editing software, stick around as this video can still give you some ideas on how to organise and store your photos. Anyway, for those of you using Lightroom, it's important to remember that Lightroom doesn't actually store your photos. In reality, it accesses them from somewhere on a hard drive, and the Lightroom catalogue just stores your edits you've made to them separately within its database. It doesn't actually modify the source file, so your stored photos are actually separate from the Lightroom catalogue and its edits. If you want to save your edits and share the edited file to somewhere like Instagram, you actually need to export that photo from Lightroom to create a file of the photo with the edits. Now I have a fairly simple method for categorising my photos and storing them. This workflow is really simple to adopt, which I think is the most important thing when implementing a method, as the simpler it is, the easier it will be to continue doing it. So I'll start off by showing you how I organise and store my photos, and then I'll show you the method I use to back them up. So first of all, I only have one Lightroom catalogue. That means all my edits are accessible within this catalogue. So in essence, all my personal photos and work photos can be found within the one Lightroom catalogue. Some people like having a different catalogue for work and a different one for personal photos. I've even seen videos where people say they create a new catalogue for each commercial shoot. I really don't see the point in this. The reason people often provide is it supposedly makes Lightroom work quicker when it doesn't have thousands of photos within the catalogue. I really don't think this is the case though, and if you organise your raw images effectively within separate folders, Lightroom always seems to work fine for me, even though I have thousands of images. So as I said, I just have one Lightroom catalogue, simply called Josh's Lightroom catalogue. However, I do save my files in a very specific way, which helps me differentiate personal and work photos and find images within each category really easily. So here in this external hard drive is where I store my photos. This hard drive is just used for photos, and you can see within the folder that says photographs, I have a folder called personal and another folder called work. Any day-to-day -day photo gets stored in personal and any client shoots go into the work folder. I also store my photos that take for YouTube videos and thumbnails in the work folder. So let's start with the personal photos and see how I organise these. We'll go into the 2020 folder, as seen as we've been in lockdown pretty much the whole year so far, I don't have many photos from this year. Even within 2020, there isn't a great deal, as the first part of that year was locked down too. But anyway, as you can see, I have a folder for each month, with the number of the month at the beginning, so they are listed in order. Now when you go into a month, you'll see I order by date, followed by the location. So if we go into August, I have the dates and locations of the photos taken in that date. This means if I'm looking for a particular photo, all I need to know is the month and the location of that photo. And if I can't quite remember the month, I can just search by location as that is included in the folder name. Now within each of these folders organised by day, I have a folder called RAW where all my RAW images are stored and a folder called Edits where the edited and final versions of the photos are stored. And that's essentially how I organise my photos. So let's see how I would do this from the start. I've taken some photos today and need to import them to Lightroom. So the first thing I'd do is create a new folder on my hard drive for the date the photos were taken in this case, April the 9th. So I'll go into April and create a folder called 9, and then the location. In this case, they're just taken from home in a local park. So I'll call the photos 9, home, Queen's Park. Then I'll create two new folders within this folder and call them raw and edits respectively. Then I just drag all the photos from today from my SD card into the raw folder. Now I don't bother changing any of the names for my raw photos, instead I only name the edits. But if you wanted to, you could select them all and call them something like Queen's Park, and this will automatically number them. This isn't something I bother with though, as I know where to find the photos from the folder names themselves, and for the most part, it's only really the edits I ever need to find by name. 
Next thing, I make sure Lightroom can see this folder. So if I go to Lightroom and then just go to import and import the folder with the location and the date. Now I can see all the new photos in Lightroom. Now if I edit these photos or apply a preset, I can then export the edits and I save these within the edits folder of that date. This is where I name the particular photos. So in this case, it's a photo of the promenade in Queen's Park. So I'll name it Queen's Park Promenade. Sticking the one at the end because I have a few photos of the promenade, which I'll edit later. So my raw files and edits are both saved in the folder by date and place and can be easily located. And I can always go back into the raws and create a different edit, which is then again saved in the edits folder. And that's basically how I organize and save my images. Starting with the year, then the month, and then the specific date and location. And within this last folder, I have a folder for RAWs and another for edits. Now I navigate through these folders in Lightroom just over here. This file system shares the exact same name as the ones in the hard drive. In fact, if I were to move a photo within these folders to another folder, it would move them in the hard drive too. It makes it super easy to navigate within Lightroom and find the image I'm after. Now I have a very similar file management system for my work photos. I organize these by year and then month, but instead of by date, I have a folder with a client's name on it. All the images usually just go in this folder, but if I shoot over lots of different days, I tend to split them up by date and location, just like the personal ones. Now with this filing system, it's really easy to navigate between personal photos and client ones without leaving Lightroom. The file management tree makes it really easy to differentiate work from personal. I find this saves lots of time as I don't need to bother with multiple Lightroom catalogs and I can find any image I'm looking for with relative ease. The last thing to note is I actually back this drive to another drive, so the photos are always backed up in case one of the drives gets corrupted. Believe me, it will happen one day if it hasn't already, and it can be so destroying if you don't have a backup, losing so many great photos. I also back up my hard drives to a cloud system just for the extra security. This is just constantly running and updates at least once a day. I use iDrive for my cloud storage and you get about five terabytes worth of backup for about 40 to 50 pound a year. So yeah, that's how I catalog, store and backup my photos. Now I'm not saying this is the way you have to do it or that other people's methods are worse. It's just simply a method that works very well for me and I think it could help you too. You could even take parts from my workflow and adapt them, add in your own elements to suit your needs. Anyway, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Check out the rest of my channel for more videos like this one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.